Yes. I'm doing this deliberately. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next over that side? <laughs> Just to augment a little bit of what people were saying there, um, I think it's important that we also understand that growth is different to this. This is getting the infrastructure right so that wherever you are on those different dynamics, you're congruent, you're healthy. What we need to also understand is we need to be, as a church, able to reach people outside of the church. And so therefore we need to have new wineskins. Because in this era, we're in a post-Christian area, not many people have got any reference points to what we would call church. So new styles, new emerging uh, representations and expressions of church need to be added in the community that people can then have their questions answered rather than our programs delivered. <coughs> because then you'll find a natural way for them to fil filter into church. And that, that's, that's a different thing. And I think a lot of people, when they read this, they think it's all about growth, 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 growth. But actually it's about health. That's good, thank you. I would also say that in those places where if you are a, well, because here we have family and, and, and village, if you are a village-sized church, and that is what God has, you understand God's calling upon you to be, or a family-sized church, and that is God's calling upon you to be, then the growth comes by you helping supporting the planting of new churches in your area. Because if you're a family-sized church, you're at capacity. No one else can get in, which means all of these people who need the ministry that MCC has to offer are not able to get it because you have a full house. And so I know that in many places, when we hear that someone is planting an MCC in our town, or in, well, what do we think, in our town, um, or in you know, someplace not too far away, we often, our first reaction is fear. What's, that's going to harm my church because there's competition down the street. Well, you know, there are fish and chips shops on every corner, and they're all doing well. <laughs> and I help them out as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's about knowing who you are and being authentically who you are and knowing where you stop and the next one be. No MCC can be all things to all people. And a lot of us try to do that and fail miserably at it. Because we shouldn't be trying to do it. Be authentically who you are, which requires you to know who you are. Talk about it. Have those holy conversations in your congregations. Who are we? And who has God served us? Who has God called us to serve? And you should be getting two different answers. And everyone is not the answer to either question. This is hard, hard work. Yes. I feel maybe a little awkward about the, the term growth because I like hear in the audience also some people associate it with um, like we need to grow. But um, maybe another term uh, that sounds more sound to me is the development because uh, as we can't just stop uh, at any point because we don't want to become those uh, living dead, um, we need to develop constantly and um, because we just shouldn't stop because it has nothing to do with life or God just to stay at one point and assume that this is the right place to be instead of moving forward to, to a direction. But that doesn't mean necessarily that it has to be growth, it's development, but that the term would, which would sound more sound to me. I think. 
Well, if that works for you, use it. Um, and I would say that I don't believe anyone in this room is the same size now as when you were born. <laughs> God bless your mothers. <laughs>
Margarita, yes. Um, how we can integrate diversity, and, and when I am saying diversity, I'm saying in a very whole sense. Yes. Diversity in the process of being a healthy church, a healthy congregation, and in the process of growing, and also how we can deal with the challenges of uh, diversity. not easy. <laughs> um, I think there has to be a desire to be in diverse community. And I believe that the desire to be in diverse community is an acquired skill. We're not one of them. We're born into families where most of the people, in some way or form, look like us. Whatever that might be. We were taught how to behave according to the culture of our family. We were taught our values. We were taught to judge others through the lens of our family, our cultures. And then we find MCC, and then we, we, as adults, we made decisions about where to live. Most of us choosing to live in neighborhoods where people are like us. We call it safe neighborhoods. And safety varies, what means safety varies from person to person. We have assume that whatever our world view is, that that should be the prevailing world view. And so find ourselves coming into MCC from very, if I can use this word here, segregated life experiences. And, and hearing us talk about diversity, and even beyond diversity, inclusivity. How do we reflect how, what, what responsibility might we have as an MCC congregation to look and act like God's beloved community for which Jesus gave his life? And so we have a lot of learning and a whole lot of unlearning to do. How do we, there are churches, even in CCs, where um, diversity is not about race and ethnicity, but it's about age. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sing that loud music. I don't want to have to do that. I want the organ playing quietly under absolutely everything, except when I want side. Anything that is not that. There are some who want you know, worship next week to be exactly as it was when the church was founded 30 years ago. It's not going to be. Tomorrow is not 1968. Darn. <laughs> So we're talking about diversity in terms of age, <laughs> ethnic background, gender identity, physical ability. Mm. We've got a lot of work to do. But if we don't do that work, the rest of this won't matter because we will have failed at our basic mission of being the beloved community 
They will know we are Christians because we'll look like them. We'll look like them. We'll look like the whole human rainbow. We will stand and sit tall. We will speak in every language of our people. And we will do it naturally because that's just what we do. It won't be an exception to make sure that they have a room in our house. The house belongs to all of us. We all get to decorate a room. We all do. And your room can be no bigger than my room. And my room can be no bigger than your room. We're all in this together. We will succeed together, or we will fail together. I vote for success. I vote for fulfillment of the commission. Do what we've been called to do. No matter how few or how many of us are doing. Sorry, I preach. <laughs>
And most of the places where MCC is still relatively new or relatively small in number, the, our pastors are what we call tent makers. That they have a full-time, usually a full-time job, and must then you know, put the bulk of their energy in the place that's providing them with a, a roof over their head, clothes on their back, and <coughs> food in their stomachs. And then have only their remaining waking hours to focus on developing the church and caring for the people in the church, and leading the church, and organizing the church, and doing the outreach, and da 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 And then the church is saying, well, you only work for an hour on Sunday. <laughs> that's not true. Every pastor that's in this room right now, I know, thinks about their congregation 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They are on the phone. <clears throat> they are texting. They are emailing. They are praying. They are reading. They are preparing. In every waking hour and dreaming about you at night. <laughs> it's pastors, tell me, am I lying? Our churches need to uh, understand that they have a responsibility to care for the pastor in the same way that the pastor has responsibility to care for the people. And part of the way that responsibility is manifest is providing a living wage at whatever level the congregation is able to do that. If you have a full-time pastor, who you were compensating as a full-time pastor, the impact of your ministry will be greater than if you are if you are <coughs> compensating your pastor for less than full-time. And pastors who are adequately compensated are usually happier. <laughs> add to that. <clears throat> and, our, and, our, and it's just a completely wow kind of experience to have someone who is providing the very best hours and, of his or her day on the ministry of your church rather than the church getting their scant leftovers and expecting their best. It's not fair. It's just not fair. So part of the assessment that that you know I, I said we asked for financial information, <coughs> detailed information on how you're spending your money. What do you value? Because that's an indicator. How you spend your money indicates what you value. Um, and looking at you know what is what are the pastors? What is the level of compensation in this network? And I know, even without having asked the question, I know that there is not one person in this network who is adequately compensated, even for part-time. I would have, have to know the numbers. And so part of the plan for, for the entire network that will have to get implemented at the local level is what plans can we make at the local level in the congregations to help the congregations to be able to increase the level of compensation that is available to, to provide for, to care for their pastor. <coughs> and I hope that when I'm doing those assessments that there's no pastor who tells me not to do this work. <laughs> I've actually had pastors who have said, oh, no, no, I don't want any." This isn't about you. It's about the health of the church. It's about the health of the church. It's about the church being good students, including of its pastor. Sorry, no, just <laughs>
the UK, we like to stick to the motto, Lord, you keep them humble, we'll keep them poor. <laughs> I love these UK bottoms. Any other questions? Observations? Then I think our time is up. And notice, please.